When I'm working on a graphic score, I'm not really thinking about specific notes and pitches, but more about uh, collections of sounds and how one sound might continue or evolve or change over time. I always think about them as having a lot of motion and a lot of a lot of momentum. If you turn this around, it could come back down this way and get caught up in this spiral here and eventually loop back out and end up over here, right? So it's all about kind of finding that motion, not only within the objects themselves, but between the objects on the page. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed and welcome back to another video. So back in July of 2017, I started a creative collaboration called The Postcard Project with the wonderful folks in my Patreon community. I have always found the idea of a piece of music or an art project that unfolds gradually over a long period of time and across great distances to be a really, really inspiring idea. And I have always had a love for snail mail. It feels so special to me to receive a physical artifact in the mail from someone. So the postcard project essentially combines all of these ideas together. In a nutshell, here's how the postcard project works. I create a graphic score on the back of a blank postcard and mail it to collaborators all over the world. They are then asked to create a musical or audiovisual interpretation of the score. Now, the reason why I'm working with graphic notation in particular, rather than more traditional Western notation, for example, is because it is so inherently open-ended. There is no formal system or set of rules for how to write or how to interpret graphic notation. And so you can approach it using a traditional instrument, like a guitar or a violin or a trumpet, for example, or you can approach it on a modular synthesizer or a laptop computer or an instrument that you make yourself and so on. In addition to playing the score that I send out, each collaborator is also invited to create a graphic score for me in return. Now, I've already mentioned that I love receiving snail mail, but receiving these scores is really exciting for me personally because each one is so different and I never know what to expect. I find that with each score that I receive, I really am pushed to a new place with how I relate to and understand musical notation and my relationship with my instruments in general. All right, so I recently received a new score in the mail and I thought this would be a perfect time to walk you through a little bit about how I approach creating a musical interpretation for one of these graphic scores. So this one's coming in from Mark Rickenbach. Now, the piece that I sent him 
was called Cycle. And I sent him the postcard score toward the end of last year. He created a beautiful interpretation using tape loops and contact mic'd recordings from around his apartment and he processed everything using a morphogene and then also created additional sounds using a modular synth. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to where you can listen to Mark's full performance if you're interested. All right, I can't wait to open up this envelope and take a look at the score. Oh, cool. This score actually has shapes cut out of the postcard. That's such an interesting idea. So you can actually see the, you know, now the wood behind. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet, but I do feel like I'm going to be focusing on maybe two different approaches or two different sound worlds for both the, the actual inked markings and these uh, cutout shapes as well. And the last thing that really jumps out to me right away here is the color. So I tend to focus on details like that as potential indications of how I might approach the timbre or the texture of a sound. For example, this to me feels like a more focused and isolated gesture or a focused and isolated sound. Whereas these two are more blurry and they are kind of sh overshadowing and colliding with these other symbols on the page. So that could perhaps be explored with some different kind of uh, time-based effect like granularization or using reverbs or delays and things like that. And then of course I have to consider what the difference between orange, blue, and green is going to mean for this particular interpretation. One of the things I love about working with color like this is that every single one of us is going to have a very different relationship and interpretation of these colors. You know, one person might take a look at this shade of orange here and picture a sunset and something that is peaceful and calm and it might bring up a memory that they have in their life and someone else might look at it and think of a wildfire or something that is you know out of control and intense I think the inherent subjectivity in all of this is what makes it so interesting as a form of musical notation because you can hand the same shade of orange or blue to 50 different people and everyone is going to receive it in a different way and respond to it in a different way. So in terms of a kind of trajectory through the score, what I've decided to do is to start here to work my way in like this um, and then to kind of tumble down this way onto this descending slope, uh, which in my imagination is a kind of gesture that accumulates a lot of movement and momentum as it falls and kind of comes down here so that it can kind of launch itself from here all the way over to this very thin cut that's in the card, get kind of wrapped up in these dots and bubbles, this kind of pinwheel that's happening here and then to shoot out the side like this and to come up on here and to exit out this way with these three circles. Now, as I mentioned before, I've been thinking a lot about the, um, the difference between the ink uh, symbols and the cut out shapes on this score. And I think what I've decided to do is to work with my Buchla modular synth primarily for all of the um, the ink gestures. And I might also run the sound into my computer for a little bit of additional processing because I am imagining uh, sounds that break apart and come together and are maybe very reverberant or have um, at times have long delays on them and things like that. I've also been thinking a lot about the title of the piece, which is Parallel. And I think that the approach I wanna take with this is to really focus on parallel as meaning parallel worlds or parallel timelines. I'm finding that really, really intriguing at the moment. So I'm going to set up a different voice or a different sound world that is 
um, in contrast to what I create on the modular synth. And I think I actually might go exclusively with acoustic sounds. All right, so I have a plan for how I'm going to approach this score. So now I am going to turn over to my modular synth and my computer, and I'm gonna start actually making the music. If you're interested in listening to the full performance that I did today, or if you're interested in joining the Postcard Project, becoming a collaborator, and receiving a graphic score from me, you can head over to my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash sarahbellreed, and sign up to become a member. This is also going to give you access to a lot of unreleased audio and extended video cuts and tutorials and a whole lot more. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.